Hello, this is Angela with Parker's Permaculture. I am in my next door neighbor's garage where we are raising our baby birds. Ben has generously lent us this space because we don't have a garage and we currently don't have a safe place to raise baby birds. So um, yay for having wonderful community connections. We have a safe place to raise our little babies here. So this is the first time we are raising turkeys. We have years and years of experience raising ducks and chicks, but we've never raised turkeys before. However, I wanna to talk today a little bit about the chicks. So when we went to order our birds, um, there's a set schedule at which the local feed store gets in shipments of various breeds. And so they have like big a big notebook and you thumb through until you find the breed that you want. And then you look at the week that it's coming in and you place your order to reserve birds. So we knew we wanted blue or black slate turkeys. And so I kind of um, situated our poultry order around that. So I picked a week that worked for us when blue slate turkeys were coming in. I picked a male and a female and they held them for us. But that meant that the uh, chicks that we were getting were going to be selected from the available breeds that were also coming in that week. And that happened to mean that we were ordering breeds of chicks that I have never raised before. Now I've talked quite a bit on this channel about how my preferred breed of chicken for the home flock is the black Australorb. I think they are hardy, resilient, really chill, even temperament. They're not like super snuggly, but they're very, very hardy and they're very mellow. So they're great for a yard with dogs or kids. They do not get flustered easily and they lay loads of big fat brown eggs. They are a larger breed and I feel that that makes them less susceptible to uh, predators like birds of prey. We have never had an issue with birds of prey and our chickens because we pick large heritage breeds. But this year we're having to raise some different breeds because I had to get what came in the same week as our turkeys. And one of those breeds is having a little bit of an issue that can be common and I wanted to talk about it because perhaps you're raising chicks and perhaps you are dealing with this issue as well. You don't need to be alarmed. It is to be expected because we have taken the uh, Eurasian jungle fowl and we have bred it into like a huge diversity of characteristics that it wouldn't normally have, much like dog breeds and how like bulldogs and French bulldogs and pugs have to be born via C-section because we've altered them so much that vaginal birth is basically impossible for them. Um, we have done a lot to our Eurasian jungle fowl and altered them in ways that sometimes they need a little bit of extra help from us. And it doesn't mean anything is wrong. It just means we need to be prepared to extend that extra care. So one of the breeds that we're raising is a Barnevelder. We have two of them. I have raised Barnevelders once in the past, hoping to get a hen because they have these lovely kind of chocolatey colored eggs. And they're just a beautiful, beautiful breed. But our one barn of elder turned out to be a roux, and so he went to live with a friend of mine in rural Oregon. So we're trying again with two barn of elder chicks. The next breed that we got is Lavender Orpington. And we've had buff Orpingtons in the past, and the lavender is bred off of that stock. So we know that that's gonna be a big, hardy, large, maybe 10 pound hen who lays those lovely brown eggs. And it's gonna be a hardy, chill, and generally friendly breed. The last breed that we got is a Cochin, and I've never raised them before. I am very, very partial to my Brahma, John Cena. I love a big, fat bird that maybe doesn't lay a lot of eggs. It's not the most prolific layer, but it's just such a lovely, uh, beautiful specimen in the flock, and it's much more of a pet. And I've been told that Cochins are even more affectionate and are like a puppy dog in the backyard. And so I thought, well, we have a lot of eggs that we're getting. If we don't get a prolific layer for one of our breeds, that's okay because the Barnevelders lay a lot, the Orpingtons lay a fair amount, and my Australorps lay a lot. And John Cena lays, she lays a little bit. And we're also gonna be adding more ducks and we'll have more duck eggs. So I got a Cochin and I wanna talk about her really quickly. Okay, so here's our chick setup. Now I do wanna note that this morning I had to raise the light when I came in. So I came in and found that all of the birdies were in the corner and right away George said, do you think they're too hot? When our poultry are all huddled under the light, you know that they're cold and you need to lower the light a little bit so that the heat is more intense. But when they're hiding in the furthest corners away from the light, it's too hot and it's a sign that you can lift the light a few inches. So I've lifted the light and now as you can see, they're really happy going all over the place and that is working pretty well for today. As they get older and continue to get more feathers and more body fat, we'll keep lifting the light until eventually we take it away.
But this seems like a good zone for right now. Turkeys are over there, by the way. This is the Lavender Orpington. I love her dark beak and her dark feet. She's such a beauty. One of the Barnevelders, the other Barnevelder. So you can see the Lavender Orpington in the foreground and the two Barnevelders in the back. There is some variety within the breed. One of the Barnevelders has a much lighter head than the other one. This girl over here taking a nap because she's exhausted from the care I've been giving her is my Cochin and I want to show you what she looks like. So Cochins have feathered feet. In general, I don't love a feather-footed breed, but uh, I do love my Brahma and I do love those big, heavy breeds. So we live in a wet area and that means that birds with feathered feet need extra care. And I generally avoid them, but I'm willing to give extra care for a few specimens. So the Cochin, I don't know if you can tell, is just really, really fluffy. Do you see how fluffy her feathers are everywhere? super fluffy. And that means she can be more prone to a problem called pasty butt, which, um, you know, is just as exciting as the name sounds. So that means her little bottom back here, because her feathers are almost hair-like. Can you see how fluffy they are? Poop can accumulate around those fluffy feathers and stick to it much more easily. And that's not her fault. It doesn't mean she's ill. It's just a result of how we've bred this breed and many others. Sorry, I'll put you back, baby. So I actually had to go give her a bath and wash her bottom off and clean off the poop that had accumulated on those feathers. And that means I'm gonna also need to keep an eye on her because this may be a repeated problem. Now, pasty butt can get so severe that birds cannot defecate effectively. Pasty butt can be such a problem that birds can actually die from it if it blocks their vent completely. Now, this little girl's really tired because I took her back and gave her a bath and cleaned her up. You can see she's nice and clean now on her vent. And so she's pretty darn exhausted. As soon as I brought her back and she was still damp and I set her with her buddies, she be began engaging in some really good grooming behavior. So it's good to see her preening. You can see here she's still doing it. She's only a few days old, so she's obviously not an expert at preening, but me having gotten her wet and cleaned her off really stimulated that behavior. And then she's back to kind of being her normal self, hanging out with the other girls. I'm gonna keep an eye on her and make sure this isn't a continued problem. Once she starts to get really feathered out, I'm hoping this problem will go away on its own. So just keep in mind, if you are raising those really fluffy breeds of chicks, we have done that to them and that means we may need to give them a little bit of extra help because they may have this problem. Now, sometimes adult chickens also have this problem. I know that my Brahma sometimes needs her butt feathers trimmed because poop can accumulate on that really light, fluffy um, kind of feathering that they have around the back end, which gives them that kind of cute, fluffy look from the back, but it's not as hygienic and it's not as easy for them to care for as more of a slick kind of stiff feather. And we did that because we like the aesthetics and that means we need to step up and give that extra layer of care. So now that I am observing that this Cochin is having this issue, I'm going to be really on top of it. Every time I come and check on the bird several times a day, I'm gonna be checking on her vent and making sure that she's looking good she's looking active and her vent is staying clean. Again, you may need with some breeds like this to be diligent about this even in adulthood, taking those scissors and trimming. Much like my poodles need their feet and their face clipped regularly because otherwise their hair will just grow and grow and grow and grow until it is in their way and it makes it not possible for them to function. When we're looking at those breeds that we have altered because of a characteristic that we hope to get, that means that we have an obligation to give that extra level of care if we want to be responsible for that breed. I will be back soon for my permaculture garden. I'm gonna go check on my grown-up birds and feed them dinner, and then I'll be back later this evening to check on my turkeys and my chicks. I'll be back soon, thanks. Hello, dead meat. Hello, buddy. Look at these feets. See his little comb? He's going to be a boy.